just go ahead and start cutting it. Oh, I didn't show you how I wanted it done, did I? <laughs> Hi, I'm Joe, and this is the Accidental Brewer. This is my daughter, Hisela. So the reason why I call this the Accidental Brewer is uh, I come up with ideas about things that I'm supposed to do with brewing. And uh, I make a lot of meads and wines. Um, so full, full credit here. This wasn't necessarily my idea to start the channel. I was brewing with uh, my daughters one day. Like we kind of do this as a family bonding thing. And uh, I said something about, I was thinking about starting uh, uh, doing my podcast because uh, I do like another podcast um, for fun. And she got excited. She was like, are we going to do a, a, a one for the brewing? And I was like, well, I guess I have to start one for the brewing now. <laughs> so that's how this started. Um, the, the, the whole idea of this is, and the reason I call this the accidental brewer is because I kind of take some other recipes that um, I've been uh, experimenting with and then I make riffs on them or I experiment with them. Um, I've made, uh, you know, four years worth of brews and I started out with my buddy named Ricky, uh, my buddy Ricky, Ricky my boy. Um, but uh, as time went on and especially with uh, some of the times that we're dealing with right now with you know, not having to socially distance because um, uh, uh, this is during the, the time where we can't go out and be around one another, um, you know, have to uh, make sure that, that we can brew them separately. So he's kind of doing his own thing right now. I'm doing my own thing, but he may sometimes come on the channel. Anyways, uh, so what have I got here in front of me? I'm going to make some capsicumels today, and I'm not really sure which capsicumels I want to make. I like... Um, the jalapeno capsicumels that I've seen before, I've had a few. Um, and I like the idea of something like a bell pepper uh, or a serrano pepper capsicumel. So I've got some, as you can see right here, two carboys, one gallon, uh, and then some serrano peppers and a jalapeno peppers. And they're all set up before we did this. We sanitized everything in a sanitizer bucket. Um, and then I've got this as a, funnel to get the honey and everything down inside. Uh, I got a gallon of water. I don't know if I'm going to need a gallon of water added on top of what I've got in there. So I'm going to put a half gallon in and then I might get another gallon in a moment. I'm going to use some Fermax. Um, now I like doing things as natural as possible, um, but I've done it without Fermax and with Fermax and um, I feel like the Fermax has helped with giving some nutrients. I also have been experimenting with, and turn around, yeast holes. Um, yeast holes are some fun stuff, but um, I'm gonna do that in my next brew because I've already brewed that before. I'm gonna see if that in increases the efficiency of the brew, makes it brew a little bit faster, a little bit better. Um, have a hydrometer, hydrometer. I have, I've had this one for a little bit over a year and I haven't dropped it yet, so. Knock on wood, um, I don't drop it. Well, maybe I should knock on my own head. Just a little bit. Have uh, the uh, graduated cylinder there, have some star sand, and then various other things like uh, stirring paddle. I don't know why I have this because I can't stir that up. Um, however, I do have, not right here, <laughs> a, a thing that I can screw on top and, and shake. So I'll, put, I'll grab one of those and put it on in a moment. But let's just get right to it. Uh, so we cut these. Hi, this is future me from the time that this video was made, but past me for you because that's the way that these things work. And I'm probably talking in circles at this point. Anyways, this cell is taking the seeds out. It's a fairly easy concept. You know, it's basically... Cut the veins, cut the seeds out, and then uh, we'll wash them in some warm water and then put them in the sanitizer to kill any bugs or anything like that that might be on them. Uh, and by bugs, I mean germs. And then uh, there you go. So back to our regularly scheduled Joe, who's probably saying something silly as we speak. So we cut these, and like I said, we, we got them all set up to be able to be put in to the primary, this is what we call here the primary. For those, for people that know, and there are a lot of people out there that do know, 
you put the peppers and everything in the primary, it imparts certain flavors. You put the peppers and everything in the secondary, and it imparts certain flavors. Now, I don't care that I'm stirring, that I'm pouring half of this in and it's getting a whole bunch of uh, oxygen into the brew here. Yeast need oxygen to begin their, you know, transformation. So, there we go. Now, we need to put two and a, a half pounds of honey, and I'm just using some Happy Belly brand honey for this, so it's not, it, you know, like the best, best honey, but it's supposed to be wildflower honey, so I'm going with that. I've used it before, and I've had some pretty good results. It actually turns out a fairly decent mead. Um, so uh, I am, oh, wait a second. How did we get down to negative two ounces? So let me hit that hold button there. There we go. I'm gonna set this on top of my thing. So believe it or not, half a gallon of water plus one carboy weighs six pounds, 13.7 ounces. I don't know why that's important, but it eventually will. But right now it weighs zero pounds. So we're gonna pour two and a half pounds from this five pound thing of honey. Oh, I've got to take the, forgot to take the top off. All right, put that back on. Now I try to be as clean as possible. However, you know, even though I sanitized the outside of this and everything, I did just touch the honey and uh, the top of the honey. Yeah, as, as I'm sitting here talking. So we're already, we're, all, we're off to the races. We're already at seven ounces of honey being added. Yeah, I don't even know why I'm, I'm pouring it through this. So see, we all make dumb mistakes sometimes, call these happy little accidents like Bob Ross does. I just started pouring it through here. Why does that matter? I could just do this. Man, that's moving now, now we're going. So the Serrano's already at one pound, four ounces. Oh, there we go. Two pounds, eight ounces. Yeah, two, two pounds, 8.7 ounces. So eh, that was off a little. Oh, uh, yeah. We're almost, almost there with the honey and everything. So normally with a brew, I wouldn't like kind of switch between these two things. And since I know this is five, this is five um, pounds, I don't have to weigh the other one. Um, it's just kind of a, a, a method of things. But since they're both gonna have the same yeast, they're both gonna have uh, all the same stuff going on. Because essentially the only difference between these two brews is that one has serrano peppers, this one right here that we're making right now, and the other has jalapenos. As much of the honey as I can out of there. I'll finish that up after I aerate. Um, I need to shake it up to mix the honey and the water together. I don't want to make a huge mess. Um, I'm going to let Hisela pour this into the other one. Take this, put it on, and then shake it. So what shaking does is mixes the honey and the um, water. It also, the other thing that the shaking does is aerates the water because the yeast need the um, honey to be mixed and aerate, um, the water to be aerated. I don't know exactly why the yeast need the air, the oxygen, to be um, filtered throughout the water, while the water has to have it kind of infused within it. But this works kind of the same way that if you were uh, rolling a carboy to be able to carbonate it, putting water, uh, shaking it up also helps you to infuse that faster. 
this infuses oxygen within it faster. Now, as you may be noticing, I'm wearing a red shirt and a dragon on it. That's kind of to symbolize the heat of the Capscomels, because um, they're supposed to be hot. But I'm hoping that these won't really be hot. So we took the veins and the seeds out of these because I'm trying to impart more of the flavor of the uh, honey and the pepper into this uh, than I am the uh, overall um, heat of it. So I'm hoping we get a little bit of heat, but mostly um, flavor. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the Serranos down inside. They were, I did uh, sanitize them. I dipped them in some sanitizer before I did this using star sand to be able to make this happen. So um, while I'm putting this together, will you add the same thing of water up to here? Let me find it so you can see it. There we go. That's it right there. All right. So we need to get a hydrometer reading. These should be pretty close to one another um, as far as sweetness goes. Keep going. You're almost there. That should be about one gallon. Now, I, in a primary fermentation, normally you want like a little bit of head of space, but I like to just bring it up to here because that's right at one um, and leave a little bit of room for, for whatever. I might add some more to this in a moment, some more liquid to it. Um, when I, after I do the reading, if it's a little bit higher gravity and that's why I am waiting. Because I, so from there to, about right here, or about right here, is 1.2 gallons. Um, and basically what I want to do is determine how sugary my liquid is. And the only way I'm going to do that is by getting things out, putting them in. So normally I'll let Hesella do the second one. I got a turkey baster. And my turkey baster comes apart, which I love. Um, but I got this idea from City Steady Brewing. City Steading Brewing. So, hey y'all, give me a shout out. Just letting you, don't, don't want to claim it was my idea. Um, but basically the idea with this is that uh, it's a little bit better than a wine thief for being able to get stuff out. All right. So The only thing that I'm really interested in um, is being able to determine what the gravity is. So um, we are at 1.082, I'll say. That's what, that's what that looks like. So that's probably pretty respectable. Let's see, let's see what this one says. I imagine it's probably going to say 1.082. And I think, if I remember correctly, that's going to be somewhere between 10 and 11% alcohol by volume. If I look on my hydrometer, it'll kind of give, give me an idea of what that could come out to. Yeah, it's like 10.2%, 10.3% to be right there. So it won't be too bad. Be a nice... Um, Honeyed wine, or honey wine, mead, whatever they call it. All right, Hassel, you want to do this? She's a pro at it. And, all right, so, oh, <laughs> this one is at um, 1.9. So, there's about a, 8 point, 1.09, not 1.9, that would be terrible. So the, this was at 1.082, this one's at 1.09. And so there's about a 0 0.008 difference in gravity between the two. That still puts us somewhere probably around 11% ABV. Um, I'm gonna say that's good enough. I mean, it's clo close enough. You're not gonna be able to tell um, a difference between the two and I don't think that the sweetness difference will, will matter ultimately. 
I'm going to drop the jalapeno down inside um, of there and um, put this back in. I'm not going to add any more liquid to it. It's got plenty enough, I think, down in there. I think we probably had a little bit of residual honey in this, and that's what drove it up that one point between the two. And there we go. Now we have like a little saucer section for our um, thing here. All right, so what's the next thing we need to do, Hassel? You don't know? We've done this so many times. We need to add the Fermax and we need to add the yeast. So we need about one and a half tablespoons of Fermax. So that's what we're gonna add now. Just, I've sanitized everything. I've had it sitting out here drying, but um, dry, adding dry stuff to wet stuff is always bad. So um, I am just going to do, and I just scratched the back of my head, so. Remember, don't use this hand when touching the brew. Um, so, yep. Just gonna put about a tablespoon and a half of this in here. I just wanna see how it works this time. Yeah, that's just uh, so good. The way it's just kinda coming in right there. There we go. And, oh, there we go. It came out a little faster this time. So, one and a half tablespoons. Think you can do that on this one? So, one of these and one of these. Got it? All right. Sweet. Now, so this is the way that I do my yeast. I take, I don't rehydrate it, I don't do any of that stuff. That there are people who do it and and I think it's probably cool that they do and I'm not using a wet yeast um, but basically what I'm gonna do here with my yeast is put a half a packet of yeast in one and half a packet in the other basically anything up to about three gallons I put half a packet in and at over three gallons I put a whole packet in and um, this is called the must right now I believe um, yeah it's the must so here's my half packet one of these packets is designed to go in for um, five to six gallons um, so there I go scratching the back of my head again trying to say sanitary and there's the other one all right now I'm gonna shake them again oh come on out come on out little yeasty guys all right, there we go. All right, so now I need my stopper that I've lost somewhere in the mix of things. Did I put it over there? No, I didn't. It was here, and now it's gone. Uh, but I also, oh, there it is. I also need to probably wash my hand. Okay. Yeah, pick it up, shake it. Yeah, good job. See those green things floating around in there? Mm -hmm. They're just floating around in there. Floaty, floaty, floaty. All right, so the reason that Hisela is shaking this up is she wants to make sure that the uh, yeast gets off the inside and gets mixed up inside of it. Uh, I just like to do that also to make sure that the firm, Firmax gets up in there. I think that's probably good enough. Um, so let's go ahead and take that off and see if that'll spew. And then, I put an airlock on it. So this is an airlock with sanitizer liquid in it and it's been sanitized, it's all clean. Um, and then the last step that we have to do and the thing that you should always do when you do one of these things is write down some basic information. So I keep, and I don't do this as pretty as my wife does, but I keep something to put the label on. So this is gonna be Jalapeno Cap Siskumel, I think is how they spell it. But that's how I'm going to spell it. So the Jalapeno Cap Siskumel. Um, because I'm not sure that I spelled jalapeno right. Um, 
and so I'm just pronouncing it the way that I spelled it um, and then the uh, original gravity I just spell OG and that was 1.09 um, and then we'll have a second gravity and a final gravity that I'll record on here and um, we'll probably come back around the time that these are done um, I might I might show you well I'll definitely show you like at some point in the middle how these are going um, but second and then the final gravity goes on there and this is how I set this up I also have a brew sheet that uh, I keep up it's just basically a spreadsheet that has a formula that will tell me um, the super scientific you know because it's not very scientific way of knowing what the alcohol by volume will be so I'm gonna turn this around so you can see it there you go you know the jalapeno caps camel original gravity second final and then uh, I forgot to put the date on here that's super important too so today's date is 10 11 2020 and um, that lets us know what's going on with that one so we're going to do the same thing here you want to you want to do it yeah, there you go you got better handwriting than i do anyways but don't worry about it too much being exactly super sterile but i take a rubber band on each one i put it over the top and then that makes sure that this does not like shoot out and um you know i lose a brew um i kind of like it you don't have to do it but um this is how you make uh, capscamels. Uh, basically, the other way that you could do this is leave the veins and the seeds in and then smash the seeds, from what I understand. Maybe put them in a tea bag if you want to be able to get them back out or just drop them in there. I'm just, try I'm just experimenting to see what the difference is between having the seeds in and not having the seeds in as far as like flavor goes. Now, I've got fruit floating towards the top. This should be a most, mostly an aerated environment and I should have killed any bugs that were in there. Uh, so we shouldn't have to worry about like bad stuff happening. But um, there is always, it's always possible that if you didn't sanitize your fruit properly or something like that, because I dipped mine in star sand and made sure that they were sanitized the best I could. If that is the case, um, then please uh, watch for anything like mold or anything like that at the top. If you start seeing that happen, shake it up, see if it goes away. If it doesn't go away, then you're gonna to have to start all over with your brew. However, these are gonna go into my closet of brewing um, that I have going on, and they'll stay there for a little while. Oh, and I saw some bubbles already starting here, so that's pretty cool. But I bet that they'll be bubbling uh, by the end of the night, and um, I'll probably check on them in about two weeks just to see where they are, if they've burned through their uh, um, you know if they burn through the sugar through the through the honey on here and if they have then we, we might uh, move them to secondary or um, so it's not really secondary fermentation I think it's more like conditioning otherwise uh, thanks for watching really appreciate it um, I think I want to start a patreon for this so if I do I'll, I'll put a link down below um, that'll just help us buy some you know more equipment to be able to do this with and um, have some fun might even allow uh, Hissel to buy some, I don't know, makeup or something like that. She likes to do that sort of stuff. And don't you? You want to buy makeup? Yeah. Um, so uh, otherwise, um, we'll just uh, stick these in the closet and we'll see you next time. Next time, we're probably going to be doing a pie mint. We're definitely doing a pie mint next time. I guess I'm supposed to smile. Got sticky hands. Sticky, sticky, sticky.